you know, today we have massive rallies across the nation and worldwide protesting the insensible laws of guns in this country. One of the slogans say they tried to bury us, but they didn't know we were the seeds. Yeah. We have seen the seeds on the stage. We have seen the seeds. In Washington DC, in the Palestine advocacy day, and I promise you, they will see the fruits of the seed when Palestine is free. Yes. Believe it. Believe it. I love when I saw a Basel running from uh, one office to another in, in the halls of Congress. I actually I saw her outside Congress, and she was very excited. Usually, Basel is very upset, like things are not perfect. But she was running like walking fast from <laughs> To go into another meeting, I don't know, with a, an office, a senator's office or a representative office, but I saw her walking and she had all of the young youth that we've seen here on the stage and she said, we feel empowered, we feel empowered. Yes, we are empowering our community and we are empowering Palestine and inshallah, we will achieve, will achieve results. Just believe in it. Now, I know that maybe we're feeling good about ourselves. We're here. Everything, uh, we, we're very happy. We hear these fire speeches and we're happy. We see the video, mashallah, we're accomplishing something. Alhamdulillah, we have a full house. But the question is, do, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Do we continue to talk to one another? Do we continue to, the, to preach to the choir? Or do we take this, this momentum, this energy to have an impact here in America? This is where we live. This is our fight. It is here. It is here in this country. We need to understand this. It is not enough to shed tears. It is not enough to try to spread hopelessness within our community when we speak about the APAC annual conference that they had just a few weeks ago. Well, they brought 18,000 people. They were very influential. And it is very influential, a very influential lobby. Yes, we know this. But it is not enough to denounce them. Not enough to denounce their, their, their policies. It is not enough to denounce our politicians starting from the vice president downward. Who were pandering to the Israeli lobby, who put Israel first even ahead of America itself. It is not enough to denounce them because what are we doing to counter these injustices that they are committed to? We need to think of what we stand for, not only what we stand against. What do we stand for? We cannot continue to identify ourselves by what we oppose, what we stand against. We have to define what do we stand for. We have to get to that point. And AMP is doing this work, inshallah. We understand that justice cannot sail on its own. We have to enable justice, to empower justice. Let me give you one example. Again, we have massive rallies. We have massive rallies today, nationwide, protesting guns in this country. You know, the public opinion, public opinion poll tells us that 70% of the American people want stricter gun control. 70%. A vocal majority for many years now, continuously, are against, want to have some gun regulations in this country. 70%. And still our Congress is pro what? pro the National Rifle Association. They're going against the will of 70% of the American people. Why? Let me tell you why. And I think Ahlam is the best to understand this. Because the 70% do not hold their elected officials responsible on where they stand on this issue. Because the National Rifle Association and its members are more passionate 
advocating for what they believe in against the overwhelming majority of the American people. So if we would continue to be silent, it would mean nothing. Yes, there is a shift in the public opinion. Yes, millennials are gearing more towards the Palestinian rights, but it will not t take a life on its own if we don't enable it. So let's continue shedding tears, and let's continue to talk to one another, and let's continue to denounce the evil policies that are being advocated for by APAC and its likes, but it will take us nowhere. It will take us nowhere. That's why AMP now is taking the job. That's why we're leading this work. And inshallah, we are going to be successful. Let me tell you this. Our pledge to you is that we will empower Philistine. What we want from you to empower us as an organization. We're offering you a contract to serve Philistine. We don't love Philistine more than anyone here. We all love Philistine. So our pledge to you as AMP that we're going to empower Philistine, just empower us to do this work on our behalf. That's what we want from you tonight. That's what we want. We cannot continue to function with the three or four staffers. We cannot continue like this. We cannot continue to worry about our budget. One final example that I want to give you. Just last month, the Herman Institute with the MLI, the Muslim Leadership Initiative, that is sponsored by the Herman Institute, which is a Zionist organization, took a hundred, hundred, educators, academics, and students, and Muslim activists to Jerusalem to teach them about the history of Israel, about the identity of Israel, to teach them about Ju Judaism and history, about Judaism and the state, and they have brought the hundred Muslim activists who are going to infiltrate our community, who are going to come back poisoned, and start spreading this poison within our community, so you will end up with the likes of this Muslim woman who wrote an article of what, how, what a Muslim woman learned from Zionism. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. She came back, wrote an article, mm -hmm. what a Muslim woman learned from Zionism. And then she was justifying the killing of the Palestinians by the Israelis. She says now, According to her article, now she understands why Israelis shoot Palestinian civilians in the streets. Denounce her? Fine. Denounce the MLI? Fine. Denounce imams and activists who are becoming Trojan horses within our community? That's fine. It will change nothing. How do we counter them? That's why we're sending two delegations to Palestine this year. A delegation of activists and interfaith leaders. That's why we have the Palestine Advocacy Day. That's why we continue our work with the SGPs and in campuses. That's why we continue our, ad our, our education for Palestine and about Palestine. But we cannot do it without you.